there was this husband and wife they had a fight and if you get married you will know that one of the things that you use as a husband and wife to get back at your spouse is a silent treatment the singles you don't know what I'm talking about but those of you who are married you know what exactly the silent treatment is when you are offended at one another and you don't want to talk about it and you give them a cold shoulder so they decided to keep this silent treatment they lasted for a whole day and the next day the husband needed to go to the airport at five in the morning not wanting to break the silent treatment he wrote a note saying please wake me up at four o'clock and left it by her bedside so of course he misses the flight he wakes up at 7 a.m comes to his wife breaks the silent treatment and says why didn't you wake me up at four o'clock like I asked you she says I did he says look at your bedside he looks and there's a note that says please wake up <laughs> these I'm just giving marriage tips we give you tips about uh, that and I'm giving you marriage tips also if you have your Bible let's go together we'll read one verse numbers chapter 14 and verse 24 numbers 14 and verse 24 but my servant Caleb because he has a different spirit in him has followed me fully I will bring into the land where he went go back please I will bring into the land which he went into I want to speak to you this evening on a topic a different spirit there is God's Holy Spirit there is demonic spirits and there is also human spirit you and I are a spirit we have a soul and we live in the body when God created us he went into the dirt and he put his hands created our body and then when our body was created God breathed into our body a breath word spirit in Hebrew is Ra or a wind or breath so God breathes his spirit into our body and the Bible says man became a living soul your soul and your spirit are so mysteriously intertwined that there's they're actually kind of together though they're separate the Bible says the Word of God separates the soul and the spirit but in reality they're together and many times the Bible refers to your soul and your spirit as a heart that's why when you see in the Bible many times a heart is refers to your soul and your spirit because it's, they're almost like together. When you die your spirit and your soul they depart from your body and that's what death is. Where death is separation. Death is not a funeral. Death is separation. When we are separated. So you and I have a spirit from God. When we are not following Jesus Christ because a spirit is given to connect to God, our soul is given to connect to humanity and our body is given to connect to the world, the physical world. When your spirit is not connected to God, it's dead. But when you come to Jesus Christ, your spirit becomes alive. Your spirit becomes new. There was a gentleman who came just recently to our church and he went through some very rough things and he was a religious person. He read the Bible a few times and last Wednesday he gave his life to Jesus Christ. And he was crying and weeping and after about 10 o'clock he calls his mom and says, Mom, I have to tell you something. God did something to me. I'm alive. I'm new. And she was kind of freaked out because he called at 10 o'clock. And if you call your parents at 10 o'clock, you know, it's usually not because you are saved. It's usually because you're in trouble. So I talked to him and he said, Vlad, I'm alive. I was like, well, it's obvious you are alive he says no not body alive spirit alive that's what happens when you get saved you become alive the part of you sometimes you don't even realize is dead becomes alive your spirit amen how many of you experienced that you know what I'm talking about so that is your spirit so your spirit came from God your spirit the Bible says is a lamp of the Lord means this is the place where God communicates to you this is your spirit is like your mailbox for God God doesn't dump or throw his messages in your backyard he doesn't throw it into your physical ears he throws it into your spirit your spirit is the connection point between you and God can somebody say amen your spirit can be developed the Bible says about John the Baptist is that John grew strong in the spirit 
so your spirit is it must be growing it must develop it shouldn't stay in the same place and one more truth I want you to write down is your spirit can endure sickness your spirit the Bible says it can sustain man in a sickness that means when your spirit is strong your spirit affects how your physical body operates many people can endure through enormous pain and can overcome and actually cancel pain by the strength of their spirit there's uh, there's stories and I remember one story about um, about Roger Benningster and he was diagnosed with a terminal illness in England and he couldn't walk because of that illness and something happened is that not only he chose and said I will be able to walk he made a declaration to his doctor he said I will run he can't walk he's in a wheelchair but because a man's spirit is focused is strong it's unbeatable that mind is sharp he began to take those steps at first he fought he fell so many times he was so disappointed emotionally but mentally he was still strong until he managed to stand on his feet and barely walk he said I will run he started to push himself and run he started to run and this man was the first man in the history of the world to break a record of running a mile under four minutes you have to understand this record of running a mile under four minutes was declared by medical doctors impossible to break in some Olympic games they even had or in some games they've had people painted red and they've sent bulls after them to make them finish a mile under four minutes and they couldn't and this man who was diagnosed with a terminal illness overcame that barrier why because every barrier in life first must be broken in your spirit every barrier in your health must first be broken in your spirit many people their barrier is not in the ring it's not in life it's not in the family it's not in the finances it's not in the business it's not your poor upbringing it's not your education it's right here a broken spirit who can help the Bible says but a strong spirit can sustain a man in his illness so here we're talking about a man his name is Caleb now a little bio on Caleb Caleb word Caleb means a dog Caleb was not originally from Israel he was Edomite he was a descendant of Esau somehow he slipped in and he ended up a part of Israel nation and but he wasn't his great grandparents were not really there he was from another place and he began to quickly rise in the nation of Israel in the position of influence one time they sent 12 guys into the promised land Canaan where the Israel is located right now on the map and they went to spy out the land means to look at if the land is as good as God described it and what will it take to take possession of that land Caleb was one of those guys along with his buddy named Joshua you know Joshua he's the guy who organized the trip to Jericho brought the walls down and he wrote the book named Joshua really cool name for the book when you're writing it so Caleb they come from spying the land and they brought a report Two guys bring a report and they say the land is awesome there's a lot of big guys there but we'll take them down we don't know how we're sure we're gonna take them down if God help us to take Egypt down he'll help us to take these guys down and then 10 other guys they come in and they begin to say really negative things and they said the land is beautiful the land is wonderful there's great fruits there but but we can't take them down there's no way we're gonna conquer them and they spread an evil report and God became upset God came and God said that's completely not cool that you guys don't trust me and he said but Caleb because he had a different spirit something inside of him was different than the rest of the ten guys he said he fully followed me see the ten guys they followed God only when God was leading them out of trouble when things were difficult in Egypt and they said God help us we'll follow you out of Egypt and they followed him but Caleb says that's not all there is to following God 
God also has a promised land and I'm choosing not just to follow God to get me out of drugs, to get me out of sexual promiscuity. I'm not just choosing to follow God to get me out of alcoholism. I'm not just following God to get me out of my painful past in which is this is where the following God begins. You begin to follow God when God takes you from your painful past. This is a great place to start following God. When God comes into your life, He will begin to lead you out of your sin. He'll begin to lead you out of your pain. He'll begin to lead you out of the cases and the challenges of your life that are very painful. That is where everything starts. But that's not where everything ends. Can somebody say amen? You know, I heard testimonies even just this week when a young man went to, you know, went to war for a country and they've seen two of their best friends lose their life right in front of them and it shattered their faith and they found themselves without God. They found themselves hopeless, despaired and even at the point of suicide. But when they were invited to the hungry generation, coming for the first, 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 first few services, they met God and they said, God, I'm going to follow you out of my despair. I'm going to follow you out of my depression. I'm going to follow you out of that painful moment. I'm gonna, you're going to take me out of that situation. And that's how they started to follow God. I remember meeting a young man even this week who just recently gave his life to Jesus who twice attempted suicide. Whose father left him and doesn't want to even talk to him right now. And he says, Vlad, my life was shattered and my life was broken. He says, I was so empty. But he says, just when I came and I met God, Jesus Christ started to lead me away from the pain of my past. See, when you follow God, He leads you from the painful places. Somebody say, Amen. Is there anybody here who God led you out from your painful places? From the breakup or maybe trauma is there anybody here God is leading you right now out of your painful places but that's not where God wants to stop somebody says don't stop here God wants to take you further and Caleb was different because Caleb followed fully fully God isn't just interested in taking you out of your insecurity he wants to lead you into places you are uncomfortable in but places, God says, that's where you belong. God says, that's what you were born for. You know, God's dream for my life wasn't just to make me secure in myself so that I will not be ashamed and embarrassed of people. I remember when I was younger and we just started a youth group, we were renting a church and I was, I think I was about 16 years of age. I just got my license and we had a Thursday night midweek service. It was just like this, except there was only six of us. And my English, you think I have an accent now? My English was exceptionally, exceptionally amazing, undeveloped. As there are six of us sitting in the first, first little five or six seats, a guy comes in into the a youth group, a very small youth group. He comes to pick up one of those guys from there and he was drunk. So he begins to make fun of my English in front of my peers. I felt so terrible. I'm barely trying to walk out of my insecurity, you know, trying to defeat that, trying to learn, get the confidence of speaking in front of five people. And here's a guy sitting in the back, he's making fun of me. So I'm speaking and he's interrupting me and all of the people, <laughs> they're giggling, <laughs> that's funny, that's cute, that's awesome. And so I'm, I'm standing there and I'm just embarrassed, I'm beginning to stutter and I, we ended the service really quickly. And I remember I was about to call next day, call the pastor and say, Pastor, uh, I did, I was the youth pastor for six months and I fire myself. <laughs> I am not good for this. We were in the Winko parking lot and I'm contemplating because we didn't have cell phones. How I'm going to come home and use that wired phone. Most of you don't know what that is but it's the thing that you call. And so, and I was thinking I'm going to call my pastor and I'm going to tell him that I'm 16 year old. I don't have Bible education. I'm not good enough. I, I'm still struggling with insecurity. And as I'm thinking what I'm going to say, I'm crying. I'm like being a little just a baby girl crying. Just, just weeping. It's so hard. Why do people not like preachers and everything? And as I am sitting there, the Lord, this was one of the first times in my life I've experienced God, spoke to me in here, in my spirit. And he said, look at the winkle. As I looked at the winkle, God started to lead me and give me a dream. So here I am trying to quit. Here I am. I just want to survive. I just want to not be ashamed of people. And God completely doesn't care about that. 
he's on a planet completely different planet and he says lot look at the store as I'm looking at the store and I see people walking in empty walking out with a lot of bags walking out with carts full of you know bags of groceries and people are going in there nobody's inviting them nobody's dragging them and hundreds of people walking in and walking out and the Lord places in my spirit not in my heart but in my spirit I feel the Holy Spirit place Vlad if you don't quit one day that's exactly how the church is gonna be people will come to church by hundreds without even invitation they will come because there is bread there and it says 24 hours and the way the Lord started to put into my heart a dream the church will be open 24 hours for prayer it says pharmacy that people will be healed I'm 16 years old literally quitting discouraged and disappointed but see God wants me to follow him fully not just out of my pain but into the prophetic future he has for me and he has for you what is the picture God has that you have to follow God to believe See most of us are happy with our bills being paid for. Most of us are happy with us being healthy, have a job and have a car and have a house to live in. But God has a picture of your future and He wants you to follow Him into that. Follow Him into that. When honestly living comfortably is so much easier. And that day I took that picture inside. I will be very honest with you that picture is still here when we worship before the services I like to go upstairs most of you do not know and I just revealed my secret to you I open my blinds and I see how all of you walking in I see different cars and I look and I was like I don't know who that person is before I knew used to know every single person that came their name where they live the name of their dog their address some even I knew their social security number because I had to help him with some some other things and now people are walking in and I'm like I don't even know I'm like I saw that person at the bank that person works over there I saw that I'm like who is that person why when you believe a picture God gives you but it's so different from the reality that's why God says I like when you have a different spirit what's inside of you is so different than what you see what's inside of you is so different than what's around you what's inside of you is so different than what's in your wallet and what's on your relationship status and God says but my man Caleb has a different spirit he is with me his reality is wilderness but he has an image of Hebron he has an image of a promised land he carries that there are giants there but he still holds on to that and God says he follows me fully some only follow me to stop drinking but he follows me to start living some follow God to only get married but he follows me to save other marriages he's following me not partially not just a little bit he's following me all the way are you gonna be that person are you gonna follow God fully not just out of your painful past but into the dream that God has for you that completely contradicts your reality contradicts your emotions follow God fully fully all the way to the end till every dream God has on your zip code for you is fulfilled by him in Jesus mighty name can somebody say amen follow God fully have a picture from God let this picture if Jim Carrey the comedian at 1987 being homeless took an empty check and wrote for himself a 10 million dollar check and he dated it 1984 uh, 1985 so 1987 and he takes a checkbook and he writes a check he puts an image in front of himself and says in 1985 I will have 10 million dollars he was not having a contract to be a movie star he was a homeless man with the picture God says Caleb has a different spirit what's inside of your spirit are you carrying grudges is your spirit not free from the pain of the past you have to free your spirit from the pain of the past 
and you have to fill yourself with the picture of God's prophetic future for your life hold on to that picture even if it contradicts everything inside of you because God's Word which created the reality you have the luxury to enjoy God's Word is powerful to change that reality and when God brings the picture inside of your mind of your future like right now we have a picture that we're praying for it's on our phones it's in our minds to your center being filled you see that's not possible it's also not possible for a virgin Mary to conceive Jesus Christ it's also not possible for so many things but my God says if you hold on to that prophetic picture I will make it happen and Jim Carrey instead of reaching 10 million dollars in 1985 in 1984 there's a movie that came out that many of you watched this so many times and most of us live by that movie dumb and dumber <laughs> you'll be surprised did you know how much money it made him exactly 10 million dollars you say but I'm a better actor than Jim Carrey of course you are the only problem you don't have that image that he had that's why you will see Peter people better than you more talented than you people with better education than you people looking better than you talking better than you but they might go higher than you why not because they're better than you their spirit is different while you're over there trying to fight with your ex they're over there protecting a dream while you're over there trying to make everybody feel like to get even with them they are there trying to get ahead while you're over there carrying the memory of your past they're carrying a dream for their future and that's why I want to challenge you step away from following God just for the past past and step in into your prophetic future prophetic future when God gives you a word it's a picture that becomes a reality for your future now you also have to be patient like Caleb but when you keep that picture God will make it happen can somebody say amen, amen. last year around this time we wanted to give our vehicle away me and my wife had a very nice vehicle and uh, we decided to that we're gonna give it away we were on Saturday driving to Fred Meyer I remember it like yesterday I carried this in my heart for some for some weeks and I told her and she says yeah we should do that and I said well let's do that maybe like in a few months let's let it settle we're like no let's just do tomorrow in this way because if we're gonna wait for a few months we're definitely not gonna give it but if we give it tomorrow then we'll just deal with the consequences later we're like let's live by faith let's do it next day we met with this couple in our church who just had an accident and they lost their vehicle and they were looking for a vehicle we knew that they were looking for a vehicle and they had a, a baby on the way and so we invited them to our house for lunch and as we we're eating now they don't know we have a surprise for them and so as we're eating as we're fellowshipping we're like hey we heard you guys are looking for a vehicle any luck they're like no and we don't have much money but we're looking for a vehicle it was like hey we wanted to give you a vehicle they're like you guys only have one vehicle we're like we know but you guys needed more so I said we're giving you a vehicle but because the bumper was scratched I said I'm gonna order the bumper fix the bumper do oil change do a few other things and then give you the car but from now on the vehicle is yours did you know what happened they both start crying nobody had the keys yet they didn't take the car with them you know what they took with them a promise which became a picture which produced feelings but I could lie the car can burn get burned out but see they trusted someone they knew when I gave them a promise they got a picture they went home as the owners of a vehicle they let their friends know we got a car and when they asked them where is it at in here <laughs> that's what people will ask you you're successful well your car doesn't show it you're like well it's here why God said it and if Vlad if you can trust Vlad you can trust God if you can trust your father you can trust your heavenly father if God gives you a dream it's as sure as gonna happen in Jesus mighty name can somebody say amen different spirit is when you allow your spirit to be different than your reality and God says that's how you follow me fully in Jesus mighty name amen